So Lin takes a bus to their old suburb. So after thinking about her friends Sue and San Marie in the last chapter, she recognizes the buildings they pass. You know, maybe she might even see them. School children wearing her old school's uniform, probably some posh IEB private school, get on the bus and Lin thinks she recognizes one of the girls. And Lin's wig and glasses protect her identity. She's got these wig and glasses, remember, from the props room. She feels jealous and quite cynical. And she gets off the bus near their old house. Now, Lin remembers the blonde Nina Grunewald's house. So just people from the past. And she gets an absolute fright when she sees Nina in the garden. Because, oh, what if Nina recognizes her, has all these questions. Oh, where are you guys now? Where's your mom? Where's your dad? Why are you wearing this wig and glasses? What's going on? And Lean looks at their old house from across the street. Now, the white wall around the house is now a shocking pink. And there's also a new post box. So the new peeps have made a few changes here. She wishes to go inside and she wonders whether the neighbors still live there. So a woman and a boy leave the premises in a big white BMW. Okay, remember, this is wealth. They were previously wealthy. They've got a bit, uh, a bit of a riches to rag story. And Lin captures a glimpse of the garden when the gates slide open. Now, Lin, she rings the bell at the gate as if she's got something to deliver. And a woman now in uniform, so most likely a domestic worker, peeps through the hatch and sees, and Lin is able to see more of the garden. So this is her old house right now. And a new family has moved in. They've got a domestic worker and Lin just wants to get a bit of a peep. So Lin says, hey, can I quickly use the toilet? And the domestic worker says, no. I mean, look, this is South Africa. We don't just let anybody into our houses, right? Even if we want to do a good deed, we're just thinking about our safety. But Lin doesn't see it like this. She realizes that she doesn't belong there anymore and she's in tears she realizes that she's not part of the suburb. This life that she once lived, it no longer belongs to her. Things are completely different now. There's been massive changes. She doesn't live in the suburbs. She doesn't drive a BMW anymore. Well, her parents don't. Things have changed and she realizes, she comes to terms with the fact that, yeah, maybe I don't belong here anymore. I belonged here for 16 or 17 years of my life, but yeah, maybe, maybe now I don't.